Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Governor. I'm honored to uh, join with you and with our teams in the work that's being done to keep Rhode Island moving forward. In terms of our data for today, as the governor said, we have 79 new cases to report. We have 82 people currently hospitalized and eight people currently in an intensive care unit. Similar to our case numbers, our hospitalization numbers have been relatively stable for the past week. Unfortunately, we have three additional COVID-19 associated fatalities to report today. These people were in their 60s, 80s, and their 90s. We now have had 1,027 COVID-19 associated fatalities in Rhode Island. Each of those lives matter and have been important to Rhode Islanders. Our prayers are with the families of each of these people and with every family that has been impacted by this pandemic over the last several months. As I've done for the last few weeks and will continue to do each week, I'll spend a few minutes now giving you a feel for what we're seeing in terms of our case investigations so that you can continue to be informed in real time about the changes that you should be making. This reflects data from the period of August 5th through August 11th, where we had 591 new cases. During that time, 40% of our cases were among people between the ages of 20 and 39, 40%. Additionally, we are still seeing cases related to social gathering. During this period, 49%, uh, 49 of our cases, just over 8%, attended a social gathering such as a birthday party, church gathering, or barbecue. In our case investigations, we are seeing a significant overlap between people who are traveling, attending social gatherings, and going to restaurants and bars where the social gathering without masks or distancing is occurring. Looking just at people who went to a bar or restaurant in the 14 days before the onset of their symptoms, they didn't just go to a restaurant or bar. A lot of them also went to a beach, to a party or some other social gathering or recently traveled. This really underscores how important it is to keep a detailed record of where you're going and who your contacts are. I want to encourage again, if you haven't already, to download the Crush COVID app because it is a great way to help do this. We are social beings by nature. Seeing family and friends is an important part of maintaining a strong emotional well being, particularly through challenging times like what we're seeing now. We want you to be able to receive the support from family and friends. We want you to be able to do that safely. How do we live with COVID in a way that keeps it controlled? That means keeping your circle consistent, keeping it small, keeping it stable. To circle back to schools quickly, I want to relay that we are being extremely thoughtful and deliberate as both the commissioner and the governor has shared. A week and a half ago, we released a playbook to provide guidance to schools on how to respond at the individual level when a student, teacher, or staff person develops symptoms. And the slide the governor showed earlier today provides insights into the different scenario tiers we have in mind and how we want to respond at the school level for going forward. We're planning and preparing for every possible scenario. Planning matters structure matters. And I want to thank the teams of people that have worked hard to make sure that we are able to deploy what's needed for each of the schools going forward. We can see what has been done with childcare and be crystal clear that planning matters and structure matters because it helps inform effective implementation. There are roughly 730 out of about 830 child care sites that are open right now in Rhode Island, each with its own COVID-19 prevention and control plan. There have been just roughly 40 cases associated with child care sites, half of them among children, half of them among the adults that work there. 
those 40 cases have been spread among just 26 different childcare sites. That tells us that we are not seeing groups of cases at multiple, multiple child care sites over the hundreds that we have. By and large, we are not seeing significant transmission and secondary transmission because of the planning and structure and work, the teamwork that we have in place. I want to give kudos to Director Courtney Hawkins at the Rhode Island Department of Human Services and her team that's worked closely with our team as well as all of the child care facility leadership. It's because of their hard work together that we've been able to be as effective as we've been. The point I'm illustrating is that when a facility has a plan and takes a thoughtful, comprehensive approach to prevention, you have a safe place to be able to work. The chances of seeing secondary spread and ongoing spread is very, very low. That means being able to screen people for symptoms, doing regular environmental cleaning, keeping people in stable groups, among other measures. These are the same steps that schools will be taking in the fall that allows us to say we're being thoughtful and deliberate about making a place safe for people to return. As has been seen with the cases with child cares, the Rhode Island Department of Health team, as the governor shared, will be all over any and every case associated with the school to immediately get infection control measures in place. It's something that we know well, have done for years, and are now working to scale it up so that we can be responsive across the whole state. In that slide with the different scenarios, the response would be slightly different based on the particulars of each situation in the schools. For example, we would take more significant action in an instance where we are seeing multiple cases in a school without a clear connection to the source because that could mean there is transmission still happening somewhere in that school. That's very different from situations in the middle column that was shown earlier where we can pinpoint and respond to the actual source of how transmission happened. The common thread through every scenario is that the Rhode Island Department of Education and the Rhode Island Department of Health together will be on it right away. We will work very closely with superintendents, principals, school nurses, teachers, and families to do what we need to keep people healthy and safe. We're doing it within child care. We want to be able to share that with you so you understand our approach with schools. I will finish with just addressing one of the issues that people have contacted us about. It's the difference between our maximum group social gathering size of 15 and the 30-person maximum size of a pod or stable group in a school setting. The reason there is a difference is because of the concept I used earlier, structure. In a school setting, teachers and staff are in place to ensure that people are maintaining a distance from each other, are sitting in the same assigned seats that are in place, are wearing the masks that they need to, to wear, and and applying all of the measures that we know are effective in decreasing transmission. We know that symptom screening is in place and that there's a plan in place to immediately isolate anyone who may develop symptoms as well as building the rapid testing system in place to support that. In the other settings and social gathering settings where we are seeing transmission happen, it's precisely because people are not doing those things that require that structure. People are not wearing the masks. People are not distancing effectively. People are not sanitizing the way they need to. That's why we have this different approach and we really want everyone to understand how critical it is with those gatherings to apply the rules that we know work. We are going to continue working with parents, families, teachers, and school administrators to help you as we're moving forward together. We are grateful for your patience, your flexibility, and your partnership, and we're here with you.